Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe. Today I'm very excited to introduce Ultimaker's latest printer to you. This is the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect and the optional air manager that goes with it. So today we're going to do an unboxing and setup video to show you what's involved in getting this new printer set up. As you'll see, it's very easy to get going right out of the box. Let's get started. Okay, so we have an accessories box as usual. We'll take a look at that in a short while. We have a spool of Ultimaker PLA silver, so you have something to start printing with. Power cord, and then we have a tray here that lifts out. And now the printer. I'm going to move this box down onto the floor to lift the printer out. Okay, so before we plug this in, let's take a look at our accessories box. So we've got a manual here, printed manual, which I'll set aside because we're pros here. Got our calibration card for leveling the bed. We've got our glass build plate. We'll take these plastic corners off here. And we'll just slide this in. Now you'll notice on the glass build plate, there's a little sticker there that uh, has the temperature warning. That sticker is supposed to go on the side facing up when you put it in because that side of the glass does have a different treatment than the underside. So you want to put it in with that side up. To put it in, we just slide it in under these metal clips and then close the clips in the front. Let's see what else we have in the accessories box. Okay, we've got our spool holder. That goes on the back of the printer. An ethernet cable, we're gonna go wireless so we won't be using that. We've got a uni lube, which is machine oil. That's what we use to lubricate the X and Y rods when necessary. We've got magna lube, which is the grease that you use for the Z axis rod in back. Again, when needed, it should be fine for now. We've got some extra little uh, tidbits here. Looks like a spare nozzle. That looks like a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Got a little nozzle wrench, little Allen wrench, and our USB flash drive. I'll just pull out the flash drive. We're gonna need that. Got a glue stick to get us started. Uh, that's useful for most materials. I prefer Magi Goo myself, but the glue stick will work fine to get you started. And then we have a, uh, a uh, hex wrench which is, uh, I think this is the two millimeter, which is what's used for most of the screws on the printer if you need to adjust anything. And then we have our power brick. Okay, let's go ahead and put the spool holder on. Just gonna flip the printer around so you can see how this goes. There's an opening for it right there. The top part goes in first, and then you squeeze the sides to put those clips into place. There we go. I'm gonna hold off on putting the spool on there because we wanna get the printer powered up, update our firmware, and then we'll go through the filament loading process. Okay, uh, now we want to go ahead and clip these two zip ties that are holding the X and Y axis rods in place. And before we power the printer on, I'm going to go ahead and unbox the air manager and get that connected up here. If you opted to go with the printer without the air manager, then obviously you would skip this step. But let's go ahead and get that unboxed right now. Okay, so we've got another printed manual. And uh, everything looks really nicely packaged. Nice uh, foam padding that's holding everything nicely in place. Here we have our filter housing, it looks like, so we'll set that aside for the moment. Uh, let's see. This looks like the front cover. Has some uh, plastic coating on there that we'll have to take off. And here is the actual filter cartridge. Just take that out of the bag. Of the top cover itself. 
All right, so first we'll go ahead and just remove the protective plastic on the cover here. Okay, so the front cover just uh, fits on with a magnetic connector. So it just sits on the bottom there and then connects up top with the magnet. So that's easy enough. For the filter housing, let's go ahead and unbox this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is mount the filter housing onto the back of the printer, and it really just sits on there. It sort of clips in place. So uh, these two pieces sit on top of the printer, and then this little piece in the middle here sort of clips onto the back of the printer. So you're just going to lay it on here and arrange it so that the, the Bowden tube and this uh, other cable here fit into this groove slot. And then just put it down so that it's, as I said, sort of clips on to the back of the printer frame and you should hear it kind of click into place like that. And now we'll just put the filter into place. Uh, you'll notice that there's a, a curved part of the face that goes towards the top. The tab down here goes at the bottom and it just sort of presses in just like that. Okay, so now that that's on there, we can go ahead and place our top cover, which just needs to be aligned. Obviously the, the hole in the back here is where the fan on the back of the filter goes. And that just fits in place like that. Okay. And now we have our UMB cable from the air manager. That's gonna come down here, go around the left side of the spool holder, and then it comes over here where you have that out port, and it's gonna plug in there with the flat side facing down towards the ground. Okay, they do give you a couple of plastic cable guides if you want you can put those on the back and use that to sort of hold that cable in position if you like. I'm going to skip that for now. Okay now we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Put this in the power connector flat side facing down towards the ground on the connector. Make sure that's snugly inserted. Uh, looks like we're all set so I'm going to go ahead and power it on here. And you'll see it powering up on the display there. Now after the launch date, when you get your Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect, you power it on, it's going to walk you through an initial setup wizard, which includes getting you connected to your Wi-Fi network. From there, you can download any firmware updates right over the internet. Since this is a pre-production unit, I'm going to go ahead and do a firmware update using the USB flash drive here, and then we'll resume. Okay, so now we've got our firmware update done, and it's powered itself on, and it's going to the welcome wizard. So this is what you'll see when you power up your printer for the first time. It says, welcome to your new Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect. We'll just push the next button. And it says, please visit ultimaker.com slash register your printer to find out more about your printer. So I'm going to skip to the main menu. Okay, so it says ready to print. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and set up the network real quick. Just go down here to the, the lowest icon there, which is the settings. And then there's an option here for network configuration. And I'm going to say connect to Wi-Fi. So it's setting up a Wi-Fi hotspot for us now. We'll then connect to that hotspot from our computer, and that'll present us with an interface to configure the Wi-Fi in the printer. Okay, so now we've got our Wi-Fi configured. It says that the printer is connected to our network. We can go back to the main menu, and at this point, we're ready to go ahead and load our spool of filament. So on the front panel, we'll select the icon with the spool, and we'll choose Load Material. Now, if I already had a spool loaded, I would choose the change material option, but since this is our first time, we'll just choose load material, and now it just guides us through this step-by-step -step process. So it says, this procedure will help you to load a new spool of material. Start loading material. I'm going to click on that. Okay, now it says your printer is currently set to work with PLA. Will you be loading a spool with the same material? So I'll say yes, otherwise I could just choose a different material type. I'll just say yes. So now it's heating up the nozzle. It does need to have a hot nozzle in order to feed the material through. So as soon as that's finished, it'll prompt us to go ahead and load the spool on the back, which we'll do momentarily. Okay, so now that the nozzle's heated, it's prompting us to go ahead and load the material. And you're going to notice right away, if you're familiar with other models of Ultimaker printers, that they've actually changed the loading process on this new model. Uh, so instead of this multi-step process of first feeding the material into the feeder, letting it grab it and feeding it up a little way and then confirming and then having it move it all the way up to the nozzle, what it's actually telling you to do is to just release the tension lever on the side of the feeder and feed the filament all the way up manually until it gets to the hot end and then flip the lever back down. So they've kind of switched to a bit of a manual uh, feed process just to simplify that, that what used to be a multi-step process. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the printer around and we'll do that as instructed. So we'll 
take off the wrapping. Okay, so there's uh, just a piece of material here that we uh, take off where it's in the, uh, the spool holes to hold it in place. Okay, so we're going to want to clip off the end of this filament so that you get a nice clean end uh, to feed through. So just clip off a few inches here. I like to clip it at an angle. You have a, and you might straighten out the last few inches as well because it comes off the spool kind of bent. And you want it to be relatively straight. Now, when you mount it on the spool, pay attention to the direction because you want the material to be coming off the bottom of the spool in this direction so that it can go towards the feeder. So this is the way that you want to mount it. It just clips right onto the spool holder like that. And then the filament comes over here and feeds up into the feeder. We're going to release this tension lever on the side. Just lift it all the way up. And then you can feed your filament through. You can see it coming out here in the Bowden tube. And we're just going to go ahead and push it all the way up until it won't go any further. There we go. I saw it go right down into the hot end there. Now I'll just flip the tension lever back down and we'll turn this back around. Okay, now there's a button at the bottom of the screen that says material loaded, so I'll just push that. Now it says material is extruding, so it's just basically clearing out the nozzle now. It's pushing material through. You will see some material come out there. They do test these at the factory, so don't be surprised if a little bit of uh, material, even of a different color, maybe comes out during this initial uh, run. But I can see that material extruding now. And you want to let it go for a moment. Don't stop it right away. Let it, let it go for, I would say, at least 30 seconds just to make sure that that nozzle is fully cleared out and the new material is now being extruded. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push the button that says material is extruding. And now it says warning the nozzle is cooling down but will stay hot for a while, so you don't touch that nozzle right away. We can just open this door and remove that material that was extruded there. Uh, keep in mind that this door is not attached on a hinge or anything. It's just, it's sitting on the bottom and then magnetically attached at the top. So, you know, don't let it drop or anything like that. You want to be careful when you're opening and closing that door. It's a little bit different from the S3 and the S5 models. So now it says your material is ready for printing. Return to main menu. Okay, so now we're ready to do our test print. I'm going to go ahead and do the 3D bend sheet, one of my favorite tests. Many of you are probably familiar with this. Uh, I'm just going to put some magic goo on the glass there, so we'll take the door off. You can use the glue stick that came with the printer. I personally just prefer the magic goo. It's nice because it uh, releases when the bed cools down, so it makes it really easy to get the parts off the bed. So as you can see, we got a really nice print here. Quality looks good, nice surface finish. Just what you'd expect from an Ultimaker. I did this print at a 0.2 millimeter layer height just uh, to do sort of a quick test. This printer is capable of doing far higher resolution than that at the expense of speed, of course. So there you go, that's the Ultimaker 2 Plus Connect. I hope you enjoyed the video and found this useful. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see other videos like this. Thanks for watching.